Hello again, classy people. This is Josh, the Top Hat Gamer, and this week I'm reviewing Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Metal Gear Solid might just be my favorite video game series of all time, so the latest entry in the series has some pretty big shoes to fill. Let's see how it goes. In the aftermath of the events of the Ground Zero's prologue, Big Boss has fallen into a coma, his men have been scattered, and his home and military stronghold Mother Base has been destroyed. Waking from his coma nine years later, Big Boss reunites with his former comrades to rebuild Mother Base and to seek vengeance from those who stole everything away from them. The Phantom Pain's narrative is about what you'd expect from a Metal Gear game. Crazy sci-fi nonsense mixed in alongside in-depth geopolitical commentary will feel very familiar to longtime fans of the series, and Hideo Kojima continues to do an excellent job of keeping such a strange world feeling grounded through its cast of well-rounded, believable characters. Longtime fans of the series will certainly be surprised by the method of narrative delivery, however. The series is well known for its exceedingly long cutscenes and the flood of exposition in the iconic codec calls, but these have been streamlined for a far more digestible approach. The codec conversations of the past have been replaced with optional cassette tapes that can be listened to whenever you find it convenient. Even then, the most important ones are clearly marked, so if the politics and military talk isn't your cup of tea, you can choose not to listen to it. Similarly, the length and amount of cutscenes feels far less overwhelming than in previous games, while still delivering emotional, engaging moments between the great cast of characters. I only have one major complaint with the game's narrative, and that's regarding its disappointing ending. The Phantom Pain consists of two chapters, and while each one has a satisfying arc, the overarching story reaches its climax at the end of the first chapter. After that, the stakes don't really reach the same level until late in the game, where a major plot point occurs and then proceeds to never be mentioned again. So on top of the odd pace, the story reaches its conclusion without resolving a gigantic loose end, and advances into a plot twist that, while suitable for the MGS universe, stands to raise more questions than answers. It feels like it's a twist for the sake of having a twist. For a final game in the series, MGS5 does a pretty terrible job of wrapping up any loose ends. Additionally, lore from previous games seems to be straight up ignored in order to explain away one character's suspicious visual design. An interesting main narrative and a solid cast of entertaining characters can only garner so much goodwill for your story when you manage to fumble it so hard, so late in the game while cheapening the details of other games in the series at the same time. Luckily, the game makes up for these problems in many ways, the least of which are its excellent visuals and surprisingly consistent performance. The Phantom Pain's choice of settings isn't the most exciting, sure, but the dusty cliffs and outcrops of Afghanistan or the lush forests of Africa have never looked so stunning, thanks in part to the game's excellent lighting and weather effects. In addition to this, the game runs like a dream. The frame rate is a solid 60 FPS from what I could tell, and the draw distance is certainly surprising. Considering how good the game looks, there's very little pop in and very few frame rate drops. Probably the least surprising aspect of MGS5 is the top notch voice acting and facial capture. While not nearly as iconic as David Hayter, Kiefer Sutherland brings a gruff, world-weary performance to Snake, which contrasts nicely alongside Robin Atkin Down's melodramatic performance as Miller. Accompanying the stellar voice acting is an excellent soundtrack. While the original tracks composed for the game are all wonderfully put together, it's the inclusion of licensed songs that cements the Phantom Pain as one of my favorite game soundtracks of all time, from the intro sequence featuring the eerie cover of The Man Who Sold the World, to the collectible cassette tapes featuring various hits from the 80s. On the gameplay side of things, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain is a masterpiece. Past games in the series were built for pure stealth, but Metal Gear Solid V takes a less rigid approach to taking on missions and progressing through the game. This is mostly due to the open world approach to the level design and the incredible amount of choice and customization when gearing up to go take on the enemy. Plus, the new control scheme introduced in Ground Zeroes has brought Metal Gear Solid as a series into a world of games that are easy to pick up and enjoy, but that also reward experimentation and mastery. For players that still value the stealth approach like myself, the base stealth mechanics and systems have been refined for a far more accessible experience while still retaining a good level of challenge. Gone are the vision cones of the past, guards now have a more realistic sense of vision which is impaired by elements such as time of day or the weather. To balance this wider area of notice, guards will also become suspicious of areas they think they spot you in before raising the alarm, unless you're flat out sprinting that is. The enemy also adapts to your tactics as you progress throughout the campaign. In the short term, patrols will notice when their comrades haven't checked in on the radio. On a broader scale, however, enemy forces will try to counter your playstyle. For instance, if you're taking out too many guards with headshots, they'll begin wearing helmets. If you take on too many night missions, the enemy will begin equipping night vision goggles to see you more easily. New mechanics such as the reflex mode and quick dive make a surprising difference to how accessible the stealth approach is. Being spotted will still lower your overall rank, 
but taking the enemy out in reflex mode allows you to avoid raising the alarm, as well as making you look like a crack shot. The quick dive on the other hand gives you a fast way to get behind cover when an enemy suddenly looks your way. And as usual, when it comes to stealth, knowledge of the area is your best friend, whether that means knowing guard routes, intel locations, or secret paths. Like many games with stealth elements, MGS5 allows you to mark your targets, but goes one step further. Interrogating enemies or having a buddy who can scout locations can reveal a surprising amount of detail on a base, including location of specialist personnel or hidden traps. But, of course, stealth isn't everyone's cup of tea. For the more combat-minded of us, the gunplay feels excellent with its responsive controls and satisfying weight and impact. I always find switching between third-person over-the-shoulder view to first-person aiming down side view to be quite jarring, but the Phantom Pain uses this mechanic to great effect. It also doesn't hurt to know that the arsenal of both lethal and non-lethal weapons available to you is extensive to say the least. Gadgets and weapons have always been a huge part of the MGS series, and the Phantom Pain is no different. Your arsenal consists of various pistols, shotguns, machine guns, and explosives, while also offering a solid toy box of gear ranging from the endlessly useful scope upgrades to the ever-present cardboard box, now with added silliness. But the personalization of your approach doesn't just end with your gear in the open levels, oh no. You're also given access to a small number of buddies that assist you in different ways. Buddies like D-Horse and D-Walker allow for faster movement, along with their own unique skills. While quiet, the Sniper and D-Dog assist with dispatching enemies and scouting outposts. These ever-helpful companions become as much a part of your approach to missions as any aspect of your loadout or pre-mission preparation, and the mother base element of the game allows you to expand your choices further and further. Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain puts a huge focus on recreating your own mother base, and assigning soldiers to different departments such as your R&D department and combat units. Filling your base with recruits and equipment you find in the field using the Fulton Recovery System is a satisfying way to encourage players to explore bases and gather resources, especially considering that your potential arsenal of weapons, gear, and uniforms can only be created by reaching certain personnel or resource requirements. Additionally, to gather more resources, you can send your combat unit out on missions, much like in Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker or the Assassin's Creed games. On top of that, you're able to build a forward operating base to accrue more resources and personnel, but at the risk of being attacked by other players online. The FOB aspect of MGS5 is a unique approach to multiplayer, as it allows you to infiltrate other players' bases and take their stuff, but building more bases requires in-game currency, and that's pretty hard to come by, unless you pay for them using microtransactions. While not an integral part of the game, it's still pretty gross seeing microtransactions make an appearance in a full retail-priced game. The only real letdown to be had with Metal Gear Solid 5's gameplay is the severe lack of boss fights. When I think of Metal Gear Solid, I think of unique and memorable encounters with some of the most out-there bosses in video game history. Psycho Mantis, The End, Laughing Octopus, I have vivid memories of awesome battles against these enemies, and while Phantom Pain isn't devoid of these encounters entirely, there's really only three or four boss fights in total, and that's being quite generous. The battles that are present are fairly memorable, but they don't quite hit the same level of character as MGS5's predecessors. At the end of the day, despite its poor narrative choices, lack of boss battles, and questionable inclusion of microtransactions, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain is still a very special game. It's not just the near-perfect gameplay or the spectacular presentation either. It's the little things that make MGS5 a real masterpiece. It's the way enemies can't be interrogated until you recruit the appropriate translator. It's being able to roll around in water sources to clean the blood off of yourself. It's the six million dollar man sound effect that plays when you use your bionic arm. It's obvious that so much love has been poured into this game, despite its few glaring problems. Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain gets the Top Hat Gamer rating of excellent. Its narrative is strangely paced and ends abruptly, but even with these issues, Phantom Pain is still an amazing game. The gameplay is intuitive and rewarding, while the narrative delivery has been streamlined and is far less intimidating as a result. It's a damn shame that MGS5 suffers from its narrative issues, but the positives far outweigh any negatives. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the review informative. If you missed the last review on Until Dawn, click the annotation. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some cardboard box sledding to do.